Okay, one of the first things then to come out of the shakedown cruise is the fact that the alternator is nowhere near up to the job. So I knew already really they never are on these on these boats. This one's 80 amps, I need sort of twice that amount really. So the combination of it uh, not having enough output at 80 amps and a regulator not actually allowing it to deliver anywhere near even that means that it's just not up to the job. So we need to get a, a big alternator. Uh, I've got one that's got about twice the size um, and we'll see how that does. So if we take a look at the state of the battery at the moment, it's in need of a charge. It's sitting at 12.7 volts and it's got a draw on it of 12 amps. Let's dial them up. Let's plug. Let's see what we get. So you can see the problem, these inbuilt regulators rarely give enough voltage and that means of course that the amperage will suffer because of it. It'll slowly come up but it's always going to be underrated. Well I've been going for 15 minutes now and the maximum I've seen coming out of this alternator is 21 amps. So with the 12 amp draw that's a maximum of 33 amps that I can get out of this alternator no matter what revs I put in at really. If I turn up the current from the mains that's probably the only way I'm going to get it into bulk. You can see it's a soft start, but it'll come in. So now it's on bulk. We've got uh, everything from the mains charger and from the alternator to get that 67 amps. That's no good at all. I've got 570 amp hours uh, of house battery bank here. Really, you should be looking at 25% or that will for, for AGMs, even 30%. Um, to, to keep them in good condition, so I'm nowhere near up to uh, what I should be. Yes, AGMs like to be charged hard to stay in good condition. Uh, this is the setup we've got, so you can see it's V-belts, uh, there's a treble on the crankcase there, and there's a takeoff for a bilge pump, so it's all got to be designed around that. Okay, so we've taken the old alternator off, here it is. It's the standard Yanmar that was on there, 70 amp. Uh, I think they call it a Hitachi mount size, so I've gone for the same type 1, but this is uh, Balmar, um, it's 150 amps, I could, probably could have gone more than that, um, but actually this was the highest that they did in this series, on the 6 series, you can go to a large case, uh, which physically is larger than this, uh, which I was tempted to do, I mean they're, they're eye-wateringly expensive, but this one's expensive enough, um, and it, 150 um, should do me, I'm putting a lot of solar on as well, so um, if I'm getting um, a lot of amps from this in conjunction with solar that should be enough to give uh, my sort of 30% charging just about to my bank uh, which is what you, you're sort of looking for at maximum charge for an AGM. Uh, obviously anything over 100 amps they, they, they either want a serpentine which are the sort of toothed uh, belts, the flat tooth belts or double V, so double V is easier for me because I've already got a double on the crankshaft pulley um, and it's just the water pump one that I'm going to have to change, so we'll, we'll look at that when it gets to it. I just wanted to show you this because um, Balmore, although they're expensive, I think there's a, there are cheaper ones you can get for 100, uh, 150 amps, but um, this at Balmars have got a very good reputation and, and they're, they're, you know, it's, it's nicely um, sorted. You get two uh, instruction manuals, one for the uh, the uh, alternator and one for the regulator. It's got an external regulator which is the, the main thing that you need. With, you need to have an external one so it doesn't start ramping down the amps much too quickly to protect the alternator when it gets hot. Um, it needs to, to know what temperature the alternator is at though so you need an extra part. It doesn't come with it from this but just order it when you get the whole thing which is the, uh, the temperature senders uh, one here uh, that's that one will go from the regulator to the alternator so the regulator knows what temperature the, the um, alternator is at at any one time and also the, the temperature of the battery so that it can adjust things accordingly and you don't get thermal runaway when things, uh, if things go wrong. So that's it, hopefully this will do the job. Um, let's see how easy it is to fit. First off, the power output cables will need uprating to cope with the bigger amperage. There are some good guides online to show you what gauge of wire you need for any given cable length. Obviously, you give everything a good clean, get it shiny, and I give it a spray with some electrical contact cleaner as well before I put on some dielectric grease, which if you've seen the solar article, you'll know I'm a big fan of. Keeps that corrosion from coming back and keeps the connections good. Okay, so the fan belts need to be reorganized. Uh, I've just cleaned off some dust off the front of the engine here. 
Um, that quite often actually is an indication of things just being a little bit out of alignment. So I'm just having a look at the alignment here and actually you can see if you put the straight edge uh, along the line of the flywheel here and then bring it out across and get my, uh, get my gauge. This is just out of kilter slightly. It needs to be slightly more that way. It's at the moment the pull is a little bit this way. You can see hopefully if I just measure that to the edge and have a look on this edge see it's about a millimeter out it's about a millimeter more this end than that so this needs to be just moved ever so slightly on its mounting uh, it's not far out but it's a little bit so i'm going to put some shims in that um, and get that level before we actually go to the new one which is the water pump and make sure that's level as well the water pump pulley needed to change position and there's no adjustment so that's a trip to a fabricator for a little cut and shunt job to uh, get it right okay so time to put the alternator on new alternator i did say at the beginning of this i was quite impressed with uh, balmar and the things they had but i'm actually not so impressed now because the uh, the bolt that they gave me the main bolt attaching bolt it's too short it doesn't go all the way through um, and I sent them a picture of this and said um, the boat's a bit short because I was a bit miffed about not getting the right one and uh, they said oh you just take this out and then it will fit well that's completely wrong um, I'll show you when we put that on why well, that's completely wrong I've got the right bolt it's uh, long enough now to go through and and do it up but this is is this little shim at the end here that moves is very important so yeah not so impressed with Belmar now some wires you can get on before you fit the alternator less fiddly that way this one's the temperature sender that goes to the regulator, so the regulator knows what temperature the alternator is. Onto the actual mounting then, and the pivot bolt. You, you can see the shim here that we were talking about that the Balmar agent told me to remove. And you can see that the lugs are slightly larger than the mounting because obviously they'll be different on every engine. So the role of the lug really is that as you do up the bolt here, you'll see that it tightens and moves and comes in and fills that gap, clamps it all nice and solid. Without it, basically all you're doing is pulling the lugs together and you'll end up snapping one of them off. There's more wiring to do than you might expect, so give yourself a little bit of time to do that and to understand the regulator, which is a little bit confusing until you've got your head around it, but actually makes sense and gives you all the information you want. It's fully adjustable and it has this quite good system of having a little magnet uh, on the end of a special screwdriver they give you and it's got a revalve just embedded inside the regulator itself. So there's no switches on the outside and nothing really that should be able to go wrong. It's a nice sealed unit, so hopefully it should last in a hot engine room. Okay, that's it all done. I've been filming this over the last three or four months. We fitted it in uh, England in the winter, but it's only now really that we can test this out properly because we're going to be anchoring now for the next month or so. And that's what this alternator is for really. It's for those times when your battery has gone down to 50 or 60% overnight and you want to quickly get it back up to 70 or 80% when the internal resistance of the battery goes high and then solar can take over. So hopefully this alternator will be able to do that. The old alternator couldn't and it will stop me having to run the generator every other day, which is what I was having to do before. So real life testing, we'll find out what happens. Um, if you're watching this sometime in the future, we're on episode three that's just gone out. So episode four is the one to watch where I will be saying, how this is doing while we're out there in the real world. So watch episode four and see if this alternator is earning its keep.